everybody. I am here with my top five books for 2019. So I've been trying to do like a book video about every month or so. And that's also my goal in 2020 is just talk about the books I've read. Um, some people are using the phrase booktube, but whatever, it's talking about books. And so I'm going to show you the top five books that I got in 2019 that I've been really, really enjoying. Um, I am doing a book club on my Patreon. If you're part of the coven level, um, we have a book club as part of that level. Right now we're reading one of, um, we're finishing up one of the books that's actually in my top, my top five, which I will talk about in a minute, which is Tarot for Troubled Times. Um, and then for January, if you're interested in joining us, we're going to be talking about, if I get my books all here, we're going to be uh, going through High Magic by Damien Eccles. So if you want to join us um, for the Patreon Coven, you can. I'm also going to be starting on my Facebook group, which I have linked below as well with the Patreon. I'm going to be doing a, a free book club, but it's going to be a fiction book club. We haven't decided yet where we're going to start reading in January, but it's going to be a witchy fiction book club, which I know I've talked about before, but this is one of my 2020 goals witchy fiction book club and that one's going to be free and it's on the facebook group um the rock and roll which is if you want to join there it's lots of fun we've got like a fair number of people and it's a really good nice community so come and join us we'd love to have you all right let's get on with the five books uh top books of 2019 so again no particular order here um i have um i have a couple of tarot books i have an astrology book and i have a couple of other kind of books. So let's start with the tarot books. So the first one, as I mentioned, was Tarot for Troubled Times. This is by uh, Teresa Reed and Shanine Miro. Teresa Reed, the tarot lady. Um, she is just very, very cool. Um, this was a really interesting book. It's a different tarot book. Um, I do like this book for it teaches you how to do your personal card, your birth card how to do your yearly card, and then also how to calculate what the major arcana is for the world for the year. And so you can really keep this as a reference book from year to year um, because it's not just going to be relevant for this year. So that was my favorite part of this book. Um, it gives you ideas of affirmations you can use for the particular years that you're in. Um, it really teaches you how to calculate that. Um, the first part of the book is really about sort of doing what the shadow work uh, doing work on yourself. So this isn't um, totally a tarot book. The first part here is really about shadow work. The second part I would say has more to do with tarot, more to do with using tarot as a healing tool. Um, and they also talk about politics as well. So there's some really nice um, spreads in here. And I think this is just a really different book. And we do live in kind of challenging times, no matter what, no matter what side you're on or whatever. I think it's challenging for everybody right now. Um, and so books like this, I think are really helpful because they don't just sweep all that under the rug or go with like love and light and everything's positive all the time, because let's face it, things are not always positive. Things are difficult. And, you know, it's not always, you know, happiness and joy. Sometimes we go through really difficult stuff in our lives. And I think books like this are really, really helpful for that. So really been enjoying this book. The second tarot book um, that I got this year that I really loved was Your Tarot Court. Um, by Ethany, um, which is, it's really cool to watch someone on YouTube for years and then see their book in the bookstore. I think that's super cool to watch them on their journey. This is a really fun read. It's fun. It's informative. Um, she, I love that she, um, has archetypes. It gives you things to think about. She associates these with astrological signs, also with pop culture. Now, I didn't always agree with the pop culture examples or the astrological examples, but everybody thinks the character of, of the court cards a little bit differently. And I mean, we're not always going to agree on everything. And it certainly got me to think about it and to think like, okay, well, why do I disagree with that? And what would I use? What would my pop culture associations be? Or what astrology signs would I associate with that? So I found this to be just a really interesting, um, fun read. And again, it's a book that I can refer back to, which I really, really love. It's not one of those books I'm going to read once and then just put away or pass on to somebody else. So she really goes into the archetypes. She really goes into, um, you know, sort of like activating those archetypes within yourself, getting to know them more. So I really enjoyed this read. I thought it was very, very informative and um, I quite enjoyed that. 
The next uh, book that I have is an astrology book, and I don't think I've talked about this one yet. Um, I got this fairly recently, but I've been really enjoying it. It is called The Stars Within You, A Guide to Modern Astrology. First of all, can we give some love to the cover? It's very shiny, right? It's that soft matte that's so popular right now, which I really love. Love a good texture. Um, this, I think, if you are looking to um, learn more about beyond your sun sign, like if you want to, you know, it's really popular right now for people to get to know things like their rising sign. Sorry, something almost fell off my lap there. Um, to get to know things like their rising sign, your moon sign, you want to know more about your particular birth chart. Um, this book, I think, is a really nice modern take on that. Um, there's lot, I mean, there's lots of great astrology books out there. Um, the only astrology book you ever need, Parker's Astrology, they're classics. But this one's like a nice, it's like a, not a super huge read. Um, it has a really nice modern take on things. And it goes through all of the signs. It goes through all of the planets in each of the different signs. It goes to the houses. So it gives you all that really good basic astrology material in a very modern way. Like, And, and it talks about things like the Pluto generations and comparing it to generations in the past. And it's just like, I think, a really well-written modern kind of book. It looks really modern. It's got like nice graphics in it. It's designed really well. So if you're lurking to learn a little more about astrology, um, this book is, I think, it's a nice quick quick kind of read or quick reference book if you want to even just look up your own stuff, right? So um, I am enjoying this. Can I also say I've been enjoying bookmarks again? Um, I kind of got away from bookmarks and was just using like little pieces of paper. But um, look at this. Beautiful. Uh, makes me feel like a kid again. I used to love bookmarks when I was a kid. Really fancy bookmarks. And now I'm back to it. All about the bookmarks. Um, the next book that I really enjoyed for 2019, um, which I have reviewed on the channel, is The Positive Shift by Katherine Sanderson, PhD. Um, this is not one of those love and light positivity kind of books, if you're worried about that. This is more from a scientific point of view. She's somebody who is, um, what, what is she again? Uh, da, 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 da. Is she a psychologist? Yes, she's a psychologist. She's a scientist. She comes from a science background. So it really talks about the power of our minds over things like our health and our well-being and things that can actually improve our positivity. So studies have shown, you know, about the way we talk, but also about um, the people we hang out with, um, about little shifts in attitude, little shifts in things that can actually help us to live longer. She talks a lot here about longevity, the importance of strong relationships with each other, social relationships. Um, exercise, that kind of thing. So it's a very interesting kind of book and it, it gets you thinking about things. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, so it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't just talk about like, oh, just think positive, everything will be fine. But it's more about how we speak to ourselves, how we deal with trauma. It's about resilience. Um, because let's face it, nobody's life is perfect. Everybody has stuff. Everybody has poop they have to deal with, right? The importance of giving, the importance of having a spiritual practice that all these studies have kind of backed up how important that is for us to have happy, healthy, and long lives um, and positivity. And that it's, you know what, it's actually more about meaning than trying to be happy all the time. So it's about finding meaning in your life as well. So really enjoyed this one. And then last but not least, we have here The History of Heavy Metal or A History of Heavy Metal by Andrew O'Neill. Did finally finish reading this. Um, I kind of read this all over the place because I'll open this and then I'll start reading. And it's so funny. I just keep reading that part. Uh, this is a book, good book if you are into heavy metal or if you are wanting to know more about it. And it's also really funny. Um, he is quite humorous. Um, and even though he slags my favorite band, Ginar, it was still funny and I enjoyed it. It's fine. It's not everybody's cup of tea. That's okay. Um, but also just like funny little stories about himself, about how um, appalled he is when somebody is wearing a t-shirt of a band that they don't actually listen to and things like that. So it's very, very funny. Um, I really quite enjoyed it. He is, is a funny guy um, and he has a lot of the same kind of like social values in some ways as me of like equality. Um, he is, he's an interesting person if you follow him on like Twitter or anything because um, he likes to, he isn't, what's the word for it? It's not, transgender isn't the word. Um, he likes to sometimes dress in women's clothing because he, he doesn't believe in like gender 
binaries and boundaries and things like that, which is, you know, kind of quite refreshing, especially in heavy metal. Um, and he's just like an interesting person. So this I found really funny, really enjoyable and just like a light read. Um, these are kind of a little more academic. And this is just like a light, fun read. And I love reading about, you know, my favorite kind of music. So I did really enjoy those. So those are my top five books for 2019. Um, did you read any of these books? What did you think of them? Also, what were your top five for 2019? If you've made a video, let me know. I know right now it's the end of the year and everyone's doing like their top 10 and their top five and stuff, but I do love reading all of that stuff. Um, again, if you wanna join us on the Facebook group, um, or on Patreon. There's links below. Thank you again so much for watching and thank you for all of your support this year. Um, it's just been, it's been a really fun and wonderful year. Um, the channel, the Facebook group have all grown a lot and Patreon and it's just been very, very exciting. And I want to thank everybody and especially the patrons for helping me to kind of make this happen and keep going and make more content. So it's been really exciting and wonderful for me. And I want to thank all of you so much for all of that, for being a huge part of that. So thank you. Um, and as always, peace and love and rock and roll.